Hello, and welcome to this video all about the Brentum scheduler component. Let's talk about how to get set up with the scheduler component without using a JavaScript framework such as Vue, React, or Angular. Here, I've created an application with the build tool called Vite. I've actually chosen to go with TypeScript just to make my IDE a little bit smarter and to help us along the way. Most everything in this video, though, will also apply to plain vanilla JavaScript. It's just a matter of changing files with the .ts extension to .js and excluding a few TypeScript-specific syntaxes. I got this project started by running the following in my terminal. npm create vite at latest, giving the project a name, and then providing a template of vanilla. This means don't use Vue, React, and so forth. You could also work completely without a build tool like Vite, including the package directly into your HTML via a script tag. But most people have some kind of bundler these days, so we're going to use Vite to take care of that. Next, we need to get access to the Brentum npm registry, and you can do that by adding this line here inside your .npm rc file. It says anything with the at Brentum namespace on it needs to come from the registry found at this address. You could also do this at a global level if you're going to be using Brentum products on multiple different projects. That's done by running npm config set and then providing that same string that you have in the .npm rc. Finally, we should log in to the Brentum registry. You would use your own email, but use a double dot instead of the at symbol. Then, if you're going to use the trial version of the scheduler component, the password would be trial. If you are a premium user, though, you would use the same password that you use for the customer zone. You can find information on setting up access to the Brentum registry and logging into it in our documentation. Come to the search bar, search for npm, and visit the page Download npm repository. It'll take you through everything we just covered. Finally, before diving into the project, we have to actually install the scheduler component. You can do that with npm, yarn, pmpm, or whatever the package manager of your choice is, we'll use npm. Or, if you're using the trial version of the component, you'll want to append at npm colon at brentum slash scheduler trial to the end of the package name. We'll install the pro version though. And then to open up the development server, we'll do npm run dev. Beautiful. Over in the browser, we see the boilerplate page for a new vanilla Vite app. To see the scheduler, we need to actually import the scheduler package and then mount the scheduler component to the DOM. In our project, let's do this in the main JavaScript file, or actually in our case, the main TypeScript file. Then I'll select almost everything that's provided out of the box, all the boilerplate code, and get rid of it except for the import of our styles. We'll want to keep those intact. Then we can import the scheduler component from the package. Next, we should create a new scheduler instance and set the append to option to the DOM element of our choice. This is going to tell the scheduler where we want it to appear on the page. You could do it directly on the body. However, V provides a pretty standard div with the ID of app to mount any JavaScript generated DOM to. So we'll use that. Awesome. Next, I'll provide just a few other options just to get things set up for our demo. Back in the browser, this is starting to look like a scheduler. However, we don't have any styles yet. Absolutely no worries. The scheduler package provides those for us too. Now, there are several different themes available. The one we'll use is called Stockholm. We'll put it into place by getting rid of the boilerplate styles and importing the Stockholm CSS file from the package. By default, the scheduler is configured to take up 100% of the parent DOM element with a min height of 10m. For your application to show the component with the appropriate size, you could, for example, make the parent component take the full height of the screen. That's what I'm doing right here, using this height 100 viewport height 
and a display of flex. I'm also giving it a nice sans serif font just for my personal preference. And now things are looking great. At the top of our scheduler, we have a particular day of the month picked out, and there are different times throughout the day displayed. Right now, the component is pretty empty though. We aren't keeping the schedule of anything. So how do we go about passing in event data? There are two different options for this. We could use the data that we already have available locally, or we can use the scheduler's CRUD manager to load data from a remote location. The CRUD manager is great for managing data from different places. So let's go with the CRUD manager for this video. First, back in the main.ts file, we'll target the CRUD manager option and then pass it the load URL, which specifies where the data exists. For us, this will just be a static JSON file available at the root route of our app. Then we'll also pass in the auto load option, which tells the scheduler to go ahead and load this up, make the request for the data immediately. With that in place, we'll need to actually create the dummy data now. I can do that by creating a new file under the public directory, call it data.json, and then I'll paste in a bunch of dummy events. In your use case, this data would probably actually come from your REST API. By the way, inside of our documentation, you can look under Guides, Working with Data, and CRUD Manager to get more information on how to work with the CRUD Manager and what the shape of this data looks like. For now, though, let's take a look at what it produces in our app. Oh, very, very nice. Now we have all these different events on our page. When we double click them, we can edit them further. When we move them around, they do in fact move on the page. We can drag them, make them longer to expand more time, or make them shorter to be a shorter duration. Let's take a look at the data now to see what it's actually doing. First of all, we have a success key here that says that we have successfully fetched the data. You'll want to return that in your API endpoint. We'll come back to resources here in just a moment, but let's start by looking at the events, which is an object with a rows property. Then we have an array here that includes an object for each unique event. Each unique event has an ID, uh, which is a unique identifier for the event. There is a resource ID, which connects the event with the resource from the data just above. There's a start date that indicates when the event should start, end date, a name for the event. This is the label that shows up on the scheduler. We can even give the event a custom icon class. This is based off of Font Awesome and customize the color of the event as well. So what exactly now is a resource? Well, I'll open this one up, and basically a resource describes the things that you're making schedules for. This is a list of people, so maybe we're scheduling work shifts at, uh, at an office or activities for different family members. You'll notice back over in the browser, though, that these resources don't actually appear on the page. Let's fix that with the columns option. Back over in our TypeScript file, I'll provide the option. And this will be an array of the columns that we want to show up on the left-hand side of the scheduler. Each column should be an object. There is a text property to specify the label or the heading that the column should have. We'll say name. Then it should also have a field which connects the column to the data from the JSON. Back over in the JSON, you'll notice that each of our different resources has a name, an age, some metadata with their job on there. So let's just make a column for the name and the age. So we need to remember these two keys right here. So text name would be field name. This lines up with that property name. And then we can specify the width of the column. How about 130 pixels? Then I'll do something very similar for age. 
How about we make it just a little bit smaller? Perfect. In the browser now, over on the left-hand side, we have all of the resources listed, or in our case, all of the people listed for whom we're creating a schedule. Out of the box, I can sort these columns, ascending or descending, and I could even drag them to make them wider. So there you have it. This is a brief introduction on how to get the Printem scheduler set up for your JavaScript application. There's still plenty more you can do with this amazing package. Things like customizing the context menu when you right click on an event, or customizing the fields that display in the event editor when you double click on an event. Be sure to tune into subsequent videos to learn just that. In order to dive even deeper into getting started with the Brentum scheduler, you could also check out this tutorial here in our documentation. It can be found under Integration, JavaScript, and Tutorial. You can also visit the guides portion of our docs, where there's plenty of information to help guide you through almost any task that you want to accomplish. So from here on out, the world is your oyster. You now have the ability to make amazing scheduling interfaces in your own applications with the power of the Printum Scheduler.